Hey, what is going on guys? Ruthenel here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. I'm gonna get the Windows command line fired up along with Notepad++ and let's get these visible for you guys so we can actually start to do something. Now, in the last video we were taking a look at functions and I had mentioned that you can you can pass information and variables and data into that function, and the function can do things with it. In this, in this video, we're actually just going to be taking a look at the fact that the function can see that variable, or that piece of information that you sent to it, and, uh, and that way it can manipulate it later on. Now, uh, we set this up in a pretty strange way, because it's just plain old batch, and that's how, that's how things work, but let's switch over to our text editor and start to write a script, and I can show you how this is going to go down. I'm going to call mine script.bat. We will do, uh, we'll overwrite whatever's there. We'll do add echo off as usual. And we'll go to our main function. I'm going to set this up just like we had previously. Create a main function, go to the end of the file. You know, you can also think of this EOF as end of function. Because when you're calling something, when you're using the call command, it'll go to uh, that function, or that label anyway, and when it gets to this end of file, it'll go, it'll kind of interpret it as end of function, and then go back to where it was previously. If you're using the go to, it'll, it'll use the go to EOF as end of file, and actually get to the end of the, uh, the file in your batch script. So that's a little bit of an interesting uh, tidbit of information for you guys. But anyway, let's go ahead and echo out. Uh, we don't need any quotation marks because we're in batch. This is the main function. Okay, and now I'm going to create a new function. I think I'll call it uh, say something. We'll go to the end of function, <laughs> and we'll just have it say, uh, I am saying something. Plain and simple. Okay, now I've created a function, and let's review how we, uh, how we ran it. We call that command C-A-L-L, -L, and you're using the colon here and the name of that function, or the label that you set it up with call say something, and we switch over to our command prompt, we can run script.bat, and it says, this is the main function, I am saying something. So it's calling our say something, and it goes right back to the previous uh, position. Remember, we can test that with uh, end. Something simple, and it just, yeah, it just goes right back here, right after the call. Okay, now we can pass information into this function. We can't really supply this up here like we would in some other languages. We normally specify the type and that sort of thing that we're sending this function. But every single function has the ability to take in arguments and uh, parameters, and that's exactly what we were like we were using with uh, some commands that you saw inside the window shell in the terminal that we're passing in some things to this, and uh, we're going to do that inside of our functions today. So. What we do is inside of our call command, right down here in our main function, when we call say something, we can supply, with another space separating these things, we can supply some information. So I'm just going to put in um, tiger. And this, now see right here, tiger is not a variable. It's nothing that we've already created. It's nothing here. In fact, it's going to interpret it as a string. So that's all there really is. In our case, when we pass this into the function, the function is going to be able to grab it and interpret it as, as a variable, but it's a specific sort of uh, variable expansion. So we're going to be using 1% sign, and then the tilde, which is right above the tab key, it's the shift formation of the little back tick, and that's the tilde, and then you're going to be using number 1. So when we call say something and we pass in tiger, tiger is the first argument that we've passed to it. So when we echo out I am saying and this percent sign one, it's getting tiger and it's going to say I am saying tiger. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it, see if it does what we want. Now this is the main function and I am saying tiger. Huh. Okay. And we can get some more pretty interesting stuff with it. What if we actually put in and I am saying one and Let's see, percent sign tilde 2. Now, if we ran this simply, we don't have anything there because we haven't passed in a second one here. But if we passed in, like, boat, it'll understand this is the main function, and I'm saying tiger and boat. So these numeric things right here, this 1 and 2, this is going to be able to identify which argument that you've passed to it and that sort of thing. But if you haven't passed those parameters, it's not going to know what to do. In fact, I'm a little curious. What if we passed in... 1, 2, and the space is actually what we're passing into it. We'll be able to interpret that. Yep, I'm saying boat and nothing. So no, it was not able to interpret it. This white space is being considered, the boat right here is going to be passed in as number 1, and then number 2 is still nothing. So 
there are some more interesting little facts for you guys, and really that's all there is. Remember that Tiger is not a real variable on this point, it's just a string and some information that we've passed to it, but the way that we pass in variables and that other sort of thing is a little bit more complex and interesting because it'll interpret this as, uh, as a string rather than a variable name if, we, if it really were a variable name. We never know, and the program never knows, so we kind of have to make up for that later on. But, uh, there it is, guys. Uh, this is a little... I know this is a little tough to understand if this is your first time taking a look at it. I really don't recommend for Batch for, like, being anyone's real language, because Batch is more of, like, a system shell and being able to work around inside Windows and the environment. It's not really too grand for programming and that sort of thing, but you do have the option to do that. So I want to be teaching you guys in this series the programming aspect of things first, and then moving on to the, the cool, the kind of nifty things you can do inside Windows and that operating system. So uh, thank you guys for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.